Welcome back to Becoming It Better Together. I'm your host, Bree. Let's go ahead and get started. Today, I wanna to ask you another question. As always, I'm going to have questions for you. I want you to use this as an opportunity to journal, to journal and get yourself critically thinking in a new way because we don't often, or at least I was a person that did not very often ask myself critical questions, actually take the time to sit down and go through, comb through the many layers and levels of my brain to find the answers. So use this as your opportunity. That is my ask as always. Here's my question. Have you ever thought about your own origin story? And I'm not talking about like, oh, your mom and your dad and they met and this is how it happened. No, I'm talking about your origin story like you were your own hero and that you went on your own hero's journey. And if you were a fan of fiction growing up or a fan of fantasy growing up and maybe you read mythology or maybe you read Harry Potter or maybe you read Lord of the Rings or something, it doesn't matter. But there's always, think about the hero's story. Think about how there is the hero and they face some sort of hardship, some sort of big challenge somewhere in their youth. So I'm going to use Hercules as an example here. Hercules. He gets cast out of the sky, basically, and gets turned mortal, even though he's supposed to be a god. And then he gets raised by this other family. He doesn't fit in. He's got all this supernatural strength they don't understand. And so eventually, his hero's tale is that he has to leave home to go find his true meaning and try and find his true parents. Because when he reaches, maybe he's 18, I'm not sure. When he reaches a certain age, his adopted parents say, hey, you know, you're not actually from here, you know, you're from somewhere else and you're special. And so you, here's your opportunity to go figure it out, go find your skills, your talents, your parents, go find your story and see where you really fit in here. And so he does. And that's what eventually he goes, he's this gangly teenager, and then he goes on this quest to become Hercules. Now, does it happen very easily? No, absolutely not. There's a lot of challenges along the way. And so I'm a huge Disney fan. It's been a big part of my childhood. And the more and more I get into marketing and the more that I read about other people and their rise to success or their business glory or whatever it is that we're looking for, it's important to look for stories that you really resonate because you want to model them. And the more that you can see parts of the tale that make sense to you and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Hey, they went through a hardship. Maybe what I'm going through right now in my life, maybe that's part of my hero's tale. Maybe that's part of my journey just like theirs. And so what brought this forward for me is I'm studying Russell Brunson. Click funnels, if you're in the online marketing world anywhere, it is a big deal right now. It's becoming a huge source of how people are growing businesses fast online. And so he was hosting some kind of class the past, I don't know, I think it was last week, but I finally learned his origin story and why it makes sense now, why he is obsessed and he's the funnel hacker and he's this guy that figured all of this online marketing out and he really is a guru in the space that I truly respect and wanna learn from. And so his origin story, when he, was a, when he was a kid, I think he was about 12, he was obsessed with junk mail. And so he found this magazine, he wanted to learn how to make money like already as a 12 year old. He was obsessed with ads. So he found this magazine at the store. He asked his mom to bring it home. She brought it home and it was 99% advertisements from different companies that would mail you their strategies for how to get rich quick at home, right? You could sell gold or you could sell jewelry or you could sell this. And it was like all these different strategies. And this was back in the day that we didn't have email yet. Okay. We didn't, it was basically cold calling or you could sign up for actual mail lists. So in the U S post, you would get in the mail some kind of sales offer, some kind of marketing offer, some kind of business. Okay, so he went through this phase until he went to college and collected all of these for years. So he showed this picture of him, and this is part of his hero's tale, right? He showed this picture of him going off to college where he had to get rid of this giant box of junk mail. And to the average person, we would have gotten rid of that junk mail a long time ago. And now he was like, you know, I would give anything to have that box still because it just showed this tale of how he was this kind of bizarre kid that had this passion for just learning marketing, but didn't even realize it at the time, and then goes on to build this incredible business in ClickFunnels, okay? So this got me thinking, and this is why this episode happened. What is my origin story? And where are some things from my childhood maybe that are just starting to make a lot of sense now? And it doesn't always, it's not always a really linear path. 
like the the girl that knows when she's six years old she wants to be a lawyer so all of her life she's a lawyer you know she wants to be a lawyer she goes to a good school she gets into a good law school she becomes an attorney and then she's happy forever that was not me i was all over the place i had no idea what i wanted to do i wanted to be a vet for a while and then a dog got put to sleep and I swore off veterinary school forever, but then I was a big science nerd and I wanted to save animals for a while. And I think I just wanted to be Pocahontas when I was about seven. And I went through just a lot of different phases, not really knowing. I wanted to do something either with animals or people and just help. But I didn't have that like knowing, yes, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be my life. I'm going to be a life coach. Like that was not in my childhood. So maybe you're like me. And you didn't have this linear path and you didn't have your calling or you still don't have your calling yet. And so what I want you to think about is what was your origin story? What did you overcome from those teenage years? Where were you back then? What did you, what, what interested you? What are you still interested in that reminds you of childhood? You're like, I don't know why I've just always been fascinated by it. And so as I was thinking about this, I started, I was like, okay, I'm going to come up with some journal questions. I'm going to go through this for myself. And this is what I do. And this is that whole gift of critically thinking. I hadn't thought about this before. Like, what are, how, how am I seeing similarities in my business now and my teenage years, my childhood? Is there some kind of comparison? I am a person too, that when I look at these mentors, these gurus, these people I really respect, I try to draw parallels so that it makes sense for me and I can see myself doing something similar because it helps affirm that belief that we can, that anything's possible, that mind over matter, you can do something you set your mind to. If they can do it, so can I. And if I can do it, so can you. And that's what really got me thinking, okay, so for me, I was a big, I still am, a huge nerd when it came to sci-fi, when it came to fantasy, when it came to these movies with cartoons and characters, but most importantly, Harry Potter. I was the biggest Harry Potter nerd, and I still, I love it. I absolutely love it. When I moved to Florida a few years ago, my, I came from Missouri, and my sister drove down from Ohio. Maybe she flew, but the first place we went I moved to St. Petersburg. We did not stay the first night in St. Petersburg. We drove straight to Orlando and went to Universal Studios and just balled out for a few days because I had never gotten to go to Harry Potter World with her. And we were the biggest little kids for three straight days in Harry Potter Land. And it was the greatest thing ever. And so bringing that full circle, I was trying to see how this all connected. And it made me think of an old podcast episode from my coach and mentor, Rob Dial. And it was called Abracadabra. And the whole concept is when you get into this mindset world and you understand where to shift your focus to and that we really can create anything we want. And that when we put our minds to something, when we put our focus on something and we narrow that RAS, that reticular activating system, if you don't know what that is, it's the lens in which you see the world and you can tell yourself how you want to view things. You can tell your brain to look for magic or you can tell it to look for problems. You can tell it to look for possibilities and just go find all the opportunities in front of you. Or you can wire yourself and your, and your lens to look for all the reasons why you need to stay stuck, stuck, why you need to be stagnant, why you cannot grow, why you are going to fail, why this is no different than any other. And so for a long time, I was looking through that lens until I learned mindset and what that really meant for me. And it was like magic. It was like somebody waved a wand and suddenly the world was full of possibility for me again. Suddenly I had hope. I knew that if I did put my mind to something, I could do anything. And so abracadabra, it actually means in Hebrew, as I speak, I create. And so the entire time I've been going through coaching, I've gotten so much more interested in energy and the law of attraction and the idea of abundance and manifestation. And I'm realizing so much more why. It seemed too good to be true in the beginning. And so old Brie, past versions of me, it was way too woo woo, magic wasn't real. Now, I truly believe magic is real. And it's part of my childhood coming full circle and making me just dive into this world so much more. And so my message to you is, if you put your mind to something, you truly can create anything. When you look through the lens of possibility and opportunity, instead of the autopilot of problems and reasons why we can't, 
We are creators every single day and every thought we have and everything we speak, we are creating our reality, our future around us. It is magic. And so if you want to change things, you don't have to wave a magic wand. You just have to work on your mindset and you have to decide. You have to get really self-aware and you have to give yourself new things to think about, new opportunities to go after, new beliefs to instill in yourself that yes, you can. And then watch as the magic begins to unfold as you do this consistently. And so this has been like a magic journey for me. I'm not a witch or wizard, but my Harry Potter is coming full circle now. And I, I'm realizing why I was so interested in it, but I was also so afraid of it in the beginning because it seemed too much like fantasy and like fairy tales. It's not. And so I love it. The other thing that I noticed is my love for animals has come back a lot. And so when I started becoming better together, if you were with me from the very beginning, if you're brand new, it started as a Facebook group when I first started my personal development journey. And maybe you feel like me and yours right now. If you're listening, you're here for a reason. You're looking for community. You're looking for growth. You're looking for empowerment. And when you start that journey, and no matter how far along it is, sometimes it can be a lonely road. We don't always have a, an abundance of people around us to talk about these concepts. And when I say manifestation and how magic exists, most of the population is going to tune out. But you're here and so you're special. And so if you were looking for community, that's why I started this in the first place a long time ago. And what made it work and what made it popular was when we did animal team challenges. And so if you've ever been part of an internet challenge, this was very different. <laughs> this was not about learning anything. This was just about having some fun on Facebook during the pandemic and just taking on a new habit and competing against other people in this Facebook group that were taking on their new habits. So we had like, we had the red jaguars that were going to read every day. And we had the purple parrots that were journaling every day. And we had, what, what do I think? The green giraffes, I think, that were eating health foods every day and trying to eat the rainbow. And we just had all these different animal teams and we rallied around this cause. I have animal analogies falling out of my brain all the time just because I could sit down and watch a nature documentary for and let days go by and never be bored. I just love it. And so I'm realizing more and more, the more that I get into online marketing, the more that my origin tale comes up more and more when I lean into being authentic. And authenticity is one of those buzz, buzzwords right now too. Funnels and authenticity. But here's the thing. If I look back, what has made me successful in my own terms, and everybody has a different definition of success, me being able to leave corporate world and start an online business that now sustains me so that I could leave that and do whatever I wanted here, that is a big, that's a big threshold I did not think I would see yet. And so I'm very blessed and honored that I'm here. But I'm realizing that what really has made the biggest difference in my business is when I start listening to me. I have a lot of mentors, I have a lot of coaches, I have a lot of guides, but it's when I lean into the authentic parts of me. I love magic and I talk about Disney characters and I do, I talk about animals and analogies and how lobsters have to shed their shells and they break it and it has to hurt and it makes sense to me and that's how I teach. When I was in finance, stocks and bonds were dairy cows and beef cows. If you're a beef cow, you're a bond. I'm sorry, if you're a beef cow, see I'm out a week and here I've forgotten. If you're a beef cow, you're a stock. You buy the cow when it's really young, you just wanna get it real fat and you wanna sell it for a nice profit, right? If you're a dairy cow, it's a bond. You don't care about the price of the cow, you care about the price of the milk. And so that was your interest rate on a bond and you would get 2% interest or whatever it is. And that was your milk price and that was the farm, okay? I've used analogies like this my entire life to teach people things. It's starting to make so much sense. So for you, if you're listening to this and you have an online business, go back in time. Take yourself back. Figure out where your origin tale makes sense with you today and how you can bring more authentically you out into your messaging, into the conversation, so that you can have more fun in your business too. If you've been wanting to run a challenge and you didn't have a theme and you wanted to, and now you're like, screw it, I'm going to do Disney princesses, good, do it. Because you know what? If you have fun in what you're doing, it shows. And if you can have fun in your business and you can bring passion to it and you can bring all, all the weird analogies into yourself, 
that's good marketing because marketing, you do want to attract the people that you want to work with and want to work with you. You also, you want to repel those that do not. We are not here to serve everybody. If you're trying to serve everybody, you will serve no one. Serve people that are like you, that are the people you can serve at the highest level because you just truly, truly connect. Those are my favorite clients. And it's because I often talk about these things that to the normal professional business would find kind of wild and out there. What do you mean you have Harry Potter analogies? But it works for the people that I really want to work with and that have really worked with me really well. And so again, my ask for you, go back, journal through your origin stories, journal through the things you loved as a child, that if you were to bring back into your messaging, into your interests, into you, in your business somehow, would it bring more authenticity and would it be more fun for you? Because if the answer is yes, bring it. It's okay to be weird. It's good to be different. We don't want to all have the same messaging and nothing has to be perfect. And that is what online marketing, that is why I'm falling in love with it. It's so unique and interesting to me because you can be unique and interesting and still build an incredible business that is not like anybody else's. And that is a gift. That's what I got for you today. Please spend some time journaling if you can. And if you have not found me on social media yet and you wanna be part of the Facebook group, We're always doing challenges. Some months we just do silly things. Sometimes I'm teaching lessons. Sometimes we do heavy topics like how to change your money mindset. Right now we're doing a lot of Halloween themed things. It's October. That's wonderful. Come have some fun with us. I will see you guys next time.